Hi Virgos and welcome to your November 2022 general tarot forecast. This is Sky coming on to talk to you about your awesome month ahead of November. Um, let's talk about it for you. I will do some intuitive messages with a week-to-week -week tarot forecast and an extended reading on Patreon linked below. Let's dive in. Okay, Virgos, it's Scorpio season. There are two eclipses happening October 25th and November 8th. I'm making videos about those, both of those. You can check my channel if you want to um, see more about that. Um, kind of like Cancer, I feel that you are in a really uh, poised and prime place to experience the changes coming collectively now. Um, a lot of the other signs are having a lot more direct problems. Um, and sure, I think that you have your own fair share of things to face as well. Um, you know, the Seven of Cups and Nine of Swords thing coming up is a little bit uh, edgy. Uh, but the rest of your cards uh, are giving you a really firm, solid majority of positive energies uh, coming in. Um, I think that any conflict that you experience in November or any like uh, fears or worries are kind of like vicarious through other people. Um, as again, I feel you to be more observing or overseeing uh, the changes rather than being a catalyst or um, someone who's directly having to um, act in that. You feel kind of behind the scenes to me. You feel like you're kind of like, I don't know, holding back or reserving your energy for a time when you have to push harder in the future, and I like that for you. Um, it's crazy how much um, messages about the entire year of 2023 are coming already. Um, of course, we are in November, so we're getting closer to the new year. Um, and I will be making a dedicated 2023 year ahead video, so subscribe if you want to uh, get notified when that comes out. But I'm feeling you uh, really reserving in 2023, and like uh, even if you're having to be out there, even if you're having to like work with people, I think that in 2023 you're going to be like kind of recharging or regenerating something that you lost a long time ago. So I'm getting like chills as I'm telling you all about this. It's almost a lot to like even talk about because it's something that really excites me as a progressed Virgo rising myself. Um, I'm a Leo rising, but um, it has progressed into Virgo at this stage in my life. Um, so it's something that I am really interested in to see how this sign is... Um, able to have such sway or uh, capability or self-empowerment without having to like be that or without having to like really command that much themselves. So it's this cool kind of like sideline or it's this cool kind of reserved or behind the scenes kind of, I don't know, influence isn't the right word. It's more like charge or... Um, almost like essence that you are starting to evoke here. And it's going to put you into a series of new beginnings. So I love seeing the Empress, the Fool, and the High Priestess coming up for you. So such young, youthful energy starting to come up in November. Uh, the Fool and the Empress, I love this yellow. I love the um, sort of solar plexus excitement, um, trusting in the new oncoming time, trusting in... Uh, in the lack of knowledge or trusting of what in what you don't yet know is really nice to see. So it's like you're confident about what's coming in the future or you're confident, even though you know that some things are changing. And there might be a lot of stress with like the Seven of Cups and the Nine of Swords about like, oh my gosh, how do I transition my life into a more sustainable structure? Oh my gosh, how do I like survive with less income so that I actually have the time to think about what I need to think about? And I'm not... And I'm not like working all of my life force energy away for a paycheck. Um, those are things really uh, important uh, for you to start figuring here and for you to start understanding. Um, because I do think that the universe is really demanding from Virgo a bit of a tuned down or less erratic type of lifestyle so that you feel more confident and you actually have energy on reserve, okay? Material on reserve. Um, Having things on reserve, having things ready to go, having things in stock, okay, is like the energy that I'm feeling for you right now. And as we build up to Capricorn season, so from Scorpio to Sag to Capricorn, you're going to see like much more appeal in that type of thing and, and having like um, your own kind of holdings without like having to push so hard and release so much. Um, imagine like spending all the money that you make or not reserving anything. This starts to feel very difficult for Virgo here. And you start to maybe create or craft new structures and new systems so that you don't have to push so hard in your day-to-day. -day. 
Um, let's go ahead and get into your week to week so we can understand more about this. In the first week of November, you have the Seven of Cups to be down by the Nine of Swords reversed. Okay, so the first week between eclipses, um, this is the hard part of the month. So there's something hard that you have to face here. It's like, wow, yes, maybe life isn't completely predetermined. Maybe I haven't figured everything out. Maybe I don't think enough about myself, okay? Seven of Cups is one of the main cards of 2022, and it'll kind of be there in 2023 as well, where it's like there's so much focus on the next step or there's so much focus on the future, so much focus on what isn't currently here that we're losing track of ourselves and even perhaps letting ourselves go in a way. That rooted down by the Nine of Swords reverse says that you're tired of that or you're understanding that that is not yielding you the answer that you're looking for. Uh, so Nine of Swords reversed, I like it more in the reverse than I like it upright because it says that we understand that the sleepless nights or that the frustration that comes as a result of not just instantly knowing something or not having all the answers is a sham or is a not really a feasible way to spend time uh, and life force energy. So there's a bit of a seeing through or a reality check that has to come through in the first week where it's like, this isn't a sustainable way of life. This budget isn't sustainable. This rent price isn't sustainable for some people. This like really excessive work schedule isn't sustainable. But then we have like all of these things where it's like, oh my gosh, am I going to lose my health insurance? Oh my gosh, am I going to like be able to pay rent? And then these things become like sort of a seven of cups type of thing where it's like, okay, so I'm just going to allow those parameters to enforce me and this kind of like, and kind of being entrapped, you know, by societal factors. That's something that we are facing here. It's a bit deterministic. It's a bit ex existential. And we are called to really um, make it work for us or find ways to uh, re-systemize our life or to make a new type of system that uh, can benefit more from uh, what we have to work with here. Um, but yes, the first week of November, it's very important to really notice uh, you getting outside of yourself, um, investing too much in the future, investing too little in the future, and to start to understand that you need to worry less or you need to freak out less about that type of stuff. Week number two, the Eight of Pentacles rooted down by the Empress. I like this a lot more. So you've figured something out. Like uh, that's almost like healing that exact energy that's coming up in the first week. So there's a major healing, I think, because we do have a total lunar eclipse in Taurus happening on November 8th, your fellow Earth sign. So a big change in material circumstances for some people, a big change in status, a big change in uh, relationships as well. Um, and it's almost like Eight of Cups and Nine of Swords. Like Eight of... I'm sorry, Seven of Cups and Nine of Swords. Uh, Eight of Pentacles and the Empress is like transmuting that into a healthy version. So you actually pull things into the present and you start kind of working methodically to place yourself onto a higher elevated energetic plane where you don't have to strive so much. You don't have to push so hard to meet your baseline. That's beautiful. So the second week is a healing week for you when it comes to how you use your life force energy. Week number three, the Fool rooted down by the High Priestess. Beautiful. Again, I love it for you. Um, the end of Scorpio season is really nice for you because you understand the next project or you understand the next level, the next series of events. And it, it's not just like pioneering. It's not just knowing that you're gaining access to a new frontier. It's also like a spiritual significance within that that is like the best of both worlds. I love the Fool and the High Priestess together because it's like real physical new beginnings meet spiritual significance. And this is like the energy that is so conducive to forming huge amounts of life force energy, prosperity, abundance, and just... Um, not even necessarily old world values or like old school ideas of prosperity and abundance, but like new, new transcending ideas of uh, prosperity and abundance uh, coming available to you in the third week of November. That's beautiful. Week number four, the Ace of Swords, rooted down by the Four of Pentacles. Um, so a new idea also. I love it when the Fool comes up by an Ace card too, because it's like, again, new, 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 new stuff. Um, you have a new idea. You have maybe a new concept, maybe a new intellectual property coming through there. Um, also like the idea for a new business um, or the idea for a new frontier, a new path. That, that's the word that I'm really getting for you all is like a new frontier here, um, new territories, new uh, places, new relationships. Um, 
Interesting that it comes up with the Four of Pentacles because that is about like the energy of standing still, uh, saving money, frugality, holding on to what you already have, and, and again, reserving your energy, which is actually here in a few different places. The Empress, the High Priestess, the Four of Pentacles. As compared to like the Fool, the Seven of Cups, the Ace of Swords, you've got this kind of like, uh, con I don't want to call it a conflict. It's kind of like a, more like a, checks and balances within that's like saying, okay, part of me wants to like strike out over here and like make a lot of progress. And then another part of me wants to like stand still and like recharge and, and refuel myself. And somehow you have to meet both of those uh, needs. So that's really the big question for you all in November is like, how do you meet both of those needs? I'm trying to get some psychic uh, energy for you about that. How do you uh, meet the need of um, striking out anew while at the same time reserving, recharging, and um, pulling back. Um, so I am getting the word minimalism. I am getting the word um, I'm getting the word um, growth in uh, or, or the series of words growth in what you already have. Um, so you need to make sure that that which you already have is uh, yielding you uh, the appropriate growths through like properly managing what you already have and then also reducing the unnecessary uh, aspects of your experience so that you have a really kind of pared down and efficient uh, foundation with which you can build off of. But um, yes, Virgo, let's talk a little bit more about that in your extended reading. I will talk more about uh, getting more efficient in your life, which is like keyword of Virgo, uh, efficiency. And um, I will talk also a bit more about overcoming again this Nine of Swords energy. I'll get some more cards, a central theme, two supporting themes, and a significator card. And uh, we will dive all into it. If you enjoyed this reading, be sure to share it with another Virgo. Hit that like button. And yes, let's go do that extended now on Patreon. That's linked in the center of your screen and below. Much love, Virgos. Have a great November. Bye.